Hello there and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about a cryptocurrency which has been very hotly discussed and in the news um, all over the cryptocurrency space at the moment. This is of course IOTA. Now just so we can get straight into it I just want to discuss what we're doing in this video and if you haven't seen any of my videos before um, what I do is I put each heading that I've got in this current slide and I'll put a timestamp next to them in the description box so if you only want to see a specific part of the video you can just click on it and go to that certain point in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what is IOTA, then how does it work, the features of it, why is it useful, the community and team behind it, where you buy and store it, the future of IOTA, and then a little bit of technical analysis to cap things off. And I also want to preface this video by saying that I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. This is just educational and you should only use this as one source of uh, reference when deciding whether you want to invest in this cryptocurrency or not. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so to start off, we're going to be talking about what is IOTA. And well, for those who don't know, IOTA is a new distributed ledger technology which has been designed to fulfill the role as the backbone for the Internet of Things, or the IoT. And we'll get into the Internet of Things in just a second. It has been named the third generation cryptocurrency, or a third generation cryptocurrency, um, because it doesn't use blockchain technology and instead uses a type of directed acyclic graph, or DAG, which is known as the Tangle. IOTA is a cryptocurrency which, I, uh, Milli IOTA more commonly, is the cryptocurrency which is utilized on the Tangle network. The coins we have circulating currently, we have quite a few coins, um, two point, nearly 2.8 billion in circulation at the moment, um, with a max of 2.7, uh, 2.8 billion as well, Milli IOTA that is. So there's, uh, I think the actual amount of IOTA itself is in the Penta range but I couldn't calculate that off the top of my head. Um, so you be, might, but might be asking why is there um, so many coins? Uh, like Bitcoin has only 21 million coins. Why would this have so many coins? Because it just destroys the value. Well, um, for the first reason, IOTA is not a decentralized currency um, and it is a utility token which is used across the network. And as I'll explain soon, um, IOTA, one of the things it does, it transacts uh, very small amounts of value uh, for very small amounts of data. And this is a very key concept of IOTA and why it has so many coins. Now the transaction time for IOTA is currently around 30 seconds to 3 minutes. It changes a bit, but it will decrease as the network grows in size. So as the tangle gets bigger, the IOTA network speeds up and the converse as well. And this will happen to the point where once it gets big enough, we will have instant transactions on the IOTA network. And also the fees on the network are zero. So how does it work? Well, just like I said, it uses a technology known as a tangle. And to simply put, um, the IOT is a concept of basically connecting devices with um, on and off switches to the internet and or to each other. This includes everything f like which we have in our daily lives, like cell phones um, and other computers, uh, coffee makers and other kitchen appliances, cleaners, washing machines, headphones, lamps, wearable devices, and basically anything else you can think of which has a switch. Um, this also can applies to like specific components of machines. For example, um, a jet engine of an airplane or a drill of an oil rig. Um, the relationship will be between people to people, people things, people to things, and things to things, being things being machines. The IOTA currency is used as the fuel for transacting functions across the network, just like I said before. Each of the, um, you can see behind me, I've got this um, sort of picture here with all these lines and, a, and all these dots. And this is a representation of a tangle. And so, I don't know why I put white dots, but um, it should be purple or green dots. Um, and each of these dots represents a transaction over the IOTA network or over the Tangle. And in order to approve a transaction, um, the person or the transaction needs to approve the two previous transactions. 
And so the green lines represent verifications. And so that way we can have uh, fees, um, no fees on the network, I should say, because the transactions are actually doing the proof of work. They're actually doing the, um, the work, the network's work for it. What this does, we have in IOTA, we have the two sort of transactions that each transaction um, validates and verifies, but then there is also um, a little bit of proof of work involved to protect against spam or civil attacks. And both of these attacks uh, require that the attacker issues a huge volume of transactions. With the proof of work in place, however, each transaction requires some sacrificing and processing power. Um, it's not that much, it's only a real little bit, but this makes it a lot harder and less attractive to generate a number of transactions, uh, the number of transactions that an attacker would need to disrupt the system. Also, the proof of work is minimal, so it does not create a large energy and cost demands, just like how people see Bitcoin, how it uses so much energy for its proof of work because it's running at a max level. They're trying to, because they have a financial incentive in Bitcoin, they're trying to push that proof of work to the max and get as much out of it as they can. But with IOTA, it is just very minimal. It's, it's basically the minimal amount that is needed to secure the network. So it's not that intensive. Also, just like I said before, due to the participation across the network, IOTA does not need fees. Um, it's sort of a, a uh, you contribute and then get your uh, reward by contributing. And the absence of these fees means the IOTA is very suitable for microtransactions and nanotransactions. So just very, very small transactions. And this is what I meant before about the number of coins. So we want a lot of coins so that we can process these very tiny amounts. So some features of IOTA, um, the first one is the coordinator. And this is a sort of a bit of a debated one among the community. Um, because the network is not yet operating at uh, like a large scale um, and the transaction volume is still pretty low, uh, it relies on something called the coordinator. And nobody really knows what it is except the developers and the team. But um, it's something which pr protects the network against uh, civil attacks and spam attacks and it, it's sort of like uh, the training wheels of the IOTA network so once the network grows to a large enough capacity when it can support itself and stand on its own legs the coordinator will be removed but um, between then and now the coordinator will run to protect the network and just like I said it's been pretty debated because people think that because it's not public it's pretty centralized but my sort of I guess an argument to this would be that uh, one, obviously we do need the network to be secured and be safe, but two, we are nowhere near mass adoption yet, so we don't really necessarily need the full, uh, the full decentralization of every cryptocurrency because every time someone sees something like this, they just uh, pick it apart because it's not fully decentralized or something, but they don't think that the network is only just getting started and we are nowhere near mass adoption. So um, you just got to keep that in mind and have a bit of a more open and wider view of it. And the IOTA team say that the coordinator helps to um, help against 34% attacks, which is also known as 51% attacks. Um, traditionally, they're called 51% attacks, but you only really need 34% of the processing power to um, to take over a network in a traditional blockchain. But the thing is with IOTA, even if you did, even if someone did buy out um, so many chips um, to gain 34% of the network's hash power, what happens is um, they could only access a few sort of little micro transactions of the network. And this is because when they join with all that hash power, they have to only, they have to first get the hash power the 34% of the network hash power, but then they have to access the 34% of the network. And what happens is when you access, when you are accessing more and more of the network, you're connecting to the tangle. And what this is actually doing is um, you're sort of shooting yourself in the foot because you're connecting to the tangle and 
the more you connect to the tangle, the stronger the tangle gets. And so you're technically using your hash power against you. So this is a really cool thing that I like about IOTA. And some other features, um, curl and gin. Um, so the proof of work algorithm, like I said before, um, on IOTA is called curl and um, employs, it employs ternary, ternary logic, um, which means in, information is stored in three states as opposed to traditional two binary logic. Um, and it provides certain type of performance benefits over traditional logic, but it is not uh, quite practical for manufacture um, of processes and uh, little things which utilize IoT, at the moment that is. And Jin um, appears to be working on a processor which is intended for the use of Internet of Things. So Jin, these are companies, like Jin is a company, and several of the IoT team members have been working with them and sort of overseeing its development. And the goal of the uh, Jin project is that it can be integrated into the um, Internet of Things devices and sort of act as a medium by which it does that. One of the other justifications for curl is that it introduces something called winter knits, one-time signature schemes, and these are just sort of a theoretical yet because quantum computing is not um, out yet, but it is sort of a way to quantum proof uh, the tangle against um, quantum, quantum computers, basically. Um, so this is something which they haven't really been working on, but they will be working on in the future as quantum cube quantum computers become more within reach. Uh, some other features of IOTA include flash channels, and these are basically, if you're familiar with lightning networks um, and lightning network payment channels, these are basically the same thing but for a, um, a tangle. And these are actually slightly a little bit better because you don't have the, uh, the fees to set up and close payment channels and they also allow you to do nano transactions as well as micro transactions. So that's a really good uh, thing for IOTA. And if you want to transact high volumes of IOTA, um, if, the, if you want to do this, it'll cause bottlenecks on the network. Um, and so what you can do, you can use flash channels and use multiple parties to deposit equal amounts of IOTA um, into a multi-sig account. And so this multi-sig requires signatures of and the verification of multi multiple people's multiple parties, if you didn't know. And everyone has to agree on this. And if um, everyone puts and everyone signs it and verifies it, it will go through. However, if um, one at least, if not everyone signs it, the uh, pr the funds will be sent back to their original owners. In this uh, way, independent groups can process high volumes of transactions by quickly minimizing their um, interaction with the tangle and um, causing bottlenecks on the network. So why is it useful? Well, first of all, like I said, it's got zero transaction fees, which is really good for the use of IoT devices because they're transacting data so much. It's constant feedback um, and constant communication. The ability for viable and micro nano, for viable micro plus nano transactions, um, is pretty much sort of connected to that last point. So it, it allows for viable connection and communication between IoT devices. Also, the other thing which is also connected to that is instant transactions. So it enables them to connect uh, and communi communicate quickly and effectively. And as the tangle grows, like I said, the transactions will get um, get quicker. And one of the things with um, IOTA is a lot of people complain about how uh, slow their transaction times are. And from my experience, I see this as a more of a thing because up until now, you can only really buy IOTA on Bitfinex. And Bitfinex has actually been the thing which is sort of bottlenecked up not the IOTA Tangle, but, you know, there have been reports of, um, you know, it, it going through on Bitfinex, but not on the IOTA chain. But so far, I can the only thing I can see a problem with is the actual Bitfinex servers. And one of the cool things is with IOTA, you theoretically have unlimited scalability. And so the thing which depends on the scalability, like I said before, is how 
big the network is. So the more people, the more devices that connect to the network, the faster and more efficient it gets. And because you have this, the only thing that really is holding you back is or limiting you is the speed of light. So these devices can uh, communicate through electromagnetic waves which travel at the speed of light, which means that this is the one thing which um, theoretically stops the scalability, but to have um, scalability up to that point would just be insane, like astronomical. So I don't think we'll even ever get there. And also, like I just quickly mentioned before, quantum resistance. Um, so they use the Winter uh, signatures. Although it's not very relevant at the moment, it will be in five, 10 years. And it's something that a lot of cryptocurrencies and specifically blockchains do have to start thinking about over the next decade. So the community and the team behind IOTA, um, I'm not, I've got the link here, but I'm not really going to click on it. Um, only because there wasn't really many profiles that I could access um, for the team. They have a team of currently around, I think it's about 32 people in the IOTA Foundation. And although they don't have many profiles, the couple that I did visit did have um, a bit of previous experience in larger companies. But like I said in my list video, it's mostly about how the team performs and how they keep to their promises. And so far, they've been pretty consistent with what they're rolling out in their updates. So it's a solid team. It's not excellent, but it's a solid team nonetheless. And the community for IOTA has actually grown quite a lot recently. Um, we've currently got 34,000 followers on Twitter and 44k readers on Reddit. And although this isn't a huge community, um, I think when I first wrote this slide, it was about probably last week, the Twitter only had about 26,000 followers and the Reddit only had about 30,000 uh, 30, readers. So in about a week, we've jumped up thousands and thousands and thousands in the community, which is a really good sign because if we can even keep growing at a fraction of this rate, then we're gonna have a huge community um, very soon. And also you can have access to the IOTA forums, which um, is full of discussion, information, and um, tech support. And so to buy and store IOTA, um, first the wallet where you store it, uh, this is one of the things which is probably not the best the market and the exchanges are actually probably the two worst things about IOTA because you're very limited, um, especially in the wallet. So the only real viable choice I would recommend is the official IOTA wallet, which is downloadable on GitHub. It's a desktop wallet um, and it's, it's pretty good. Um, there's been some complaints about it um, with people not start showing their funds and things like that, but often all you need to do, this is usually because your client is out of date, so you just need to go and upgrade to the new version. And in terms of the markets for IOTA, this is something which has really held it back for a long time. Even today, we haven't got that many exchanges on there. Um, it was mostly Bitfinex up until recently, and we've just recently, um, pretty recently, got um, IOTA on Binance as well. And just very, very recently, uh, CoinOne, a big Korean exchange, has just listed IOTA. And you can see some big volume coming out of Korea right now. And this is very good to see uh, because Koreans are buying so much cryptocurrency at the moment. So it's really good for the future price of IOTA. Now, the future um, of IOTA, on the roadmap, they've, put, they've got quite a bit ahead of them. Um, they're looking to adopt more coding languages, so just all the regular ones like Java, C++, Rust, Go, Python, and C Sharp, uh, which is really good because it enables a new sort of, um, a new audience or a new range of developers to come and develop on their platform. They're looking to make something called a Swarm Client, which uses sharding to enable multiple devices to make transactions uh, without becoming a full node. Um, they've also, to increase efficiency, they're introducing auto snapshotting to reduce the load on the network. So you just take a snapshot of the tangle, you don't have to download the whole tangle. Um, and perm nodes, so this is sort of uh, related to that. So instead of um, snapshotting, these guys um, will have the whole tangle um, on their sort of on the node, but they will allow for snapshots to checkpoint the network to uh, remove trust requirements and increase reliability of the network. Like I said before, they've got flash channels coming up 
And then another thing is masked authenticated messaging, which is um, something which helps to encrypt data in a quantum proof fashion, just like I talked about before. And also a privacy feature. They're looking, they're not really decided on anything yet, but um, they're looking into options like zero knowledge proofs, which is a very nice privacy feature. So my thoughts on IOTA is that it has a huge potential, but at the moment we've sort of, we're only at the start of the IoT and we've got a lack of IoT devices um, available. And also there's a lot of misconceptions of IOTA holding it back, um, which I think I'll probably make a, a whole complete video regarding some of these misconceptions because it's one of the things that really stops people from investing in this coin. Um, the scalability um, and the quantum resistance uh, are two really big um, sort of buying points for IOTA, especially in the future as it gets bigger and it get as an, and as it gets quantum proof, and also the low fees and the high speed, um, the future high speed are very good as well. I'd like to see it put onto some more exchanges so we can see some more liquidity and some new a newer audience coming to this coin because that's when we're really going to see mass adoption of this coin and see large, large growth. And also the big thing that we've just had recently, only probably last week, IOTA has just announced a new partnership with Microsoft plus um, like 20 other companies which include like Samsung, um, Bosch, Fujitsu, other big companies like that um, to create the first decentralized marketplace for data of the internet of things. And this is a huge, huge thing. Even though it's just a partnership, to be partnered with all these companies, all these major companies, is a really big step in this cryptocurrency. And we can see the hype around it because it's been reflected in the price. And so, now that I talk about the price, let's get into the technical analysis of the bit. And like I said before, we can see here, this is looking at a 30 minute chart. Um, lately we've been on a nice sort of bull run here with some reasonable volume. We sort of came up here and then we cooled off on the volume a little bit, but now we've got some nice consistent volume, even though we've started to pull back over this bull run a little bit. We can see there's still nice volume coming in. And so we had the announcement the other day, well, I think it was probably about a week ago now, and we've had this big sort of stepping run up ever since. And we reached this point of um, nearly $3 from, you know, just under a dollar starting down here um, before we started the bull run. And it started to pull back. Um, a lot of people probably bought in and bought into the FOMO. Um, which is never a good thing to do. Um, so it's pulled back to this 50 day moving average and it's actually gone through this 50 day, 50 day moving average. So short term, that's probably not a very good sign, but it is also, it's healthy for it to pull back because once it gets too overstretched, um, I mean, the more overstretched it gets, the harder it will fall. We're running down on the RSI, but we're really getting close to overselling. So you better watch for that bottom if you want to buy in any. And also the MACD has just crossed over the negative. So we're just going to have to wait and see when that sort of curves back up. But in terms of a pattern, um, there's not really anything at the moment. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see if this bounces back up and forms a head and shoulders. We might be on a bit of a down slope, but if it bounces off and keeps shooting back up, then we might be on a bit of a bull run for the next couple of months. Because I think personally, um, Two things could happen. Uh, it's kind of bad to say this, but it could be the binary opposites. For the next few months, we could either have all green for most of the altcoins and cryptocurrencies, or we could see something like a big 50% correction. But time will tell, and we're just going to have to wait it out and see. I do have IOTA in my um, wallet um, and in my portfolio at the moment. However, I'm not adding any at the moment because the market's sort of a bit overpriced for me and even now it's sort of showing a bit of indecision. But I would wait for a pullback, just a slight pullback. I think it should sort of pull back down below the $2 mark. That's probably the best time to buy something. And if it pulls back even further, I'll just keep adding more and more to my portfolio because I think it's gonna have a very, very big 2018. 
And so that'll do it for this video. Um, if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button because I'll be bringing out future videos on future cryptocurrencies very, very soon. I'll catch you later.